Hello everyone, I'm Ed Top 64 I'm the Flameflow. I'm Tanner of the North. And I'm Richie. And welcome to the Hellfire Comms revised playthrough of Pokemon Snap. We did this uh, a number of years ago, but uh, I figured with a new Snap on the horizon, uh, we should basically go ahead and redo the original to get you guys in the mood for the upcoming playthrough here. So uh, let's see, control stick set up, bada bing, and uh, that should give me proper controls. And uh, I'm not going to remove the previous playthrough, I am going to unlist the parts though so they don't get mixed up with the new one, but the playlist will still be there so you can get to it uh, should you wish to watch that and you know, compare and contrast with the new one. Tanner, this is basically your baby, so... Uh, What's the deal with Pokemon Snap, mate? Why do you dig it so much? Pokemon Snap was, for me, probably one of the first video games that I ever actually got. Um, I was able to play it quite a number of times fully through um, because it was a game that my grandma got at her house. And then when I got the N64, I brought it home. So I've played it like 30, 40 times and it is literally a part of my like yearly things I have to do. So I love this game. It is so endlessly replayable and uh, hey, look, we're doing it here right now. Oh, we are indeed. Right here, right now, it's Pokemon Snap time, baby. Can't believe this fucker came out over 20 years ago, 1999. Although, I believe, Richie, you were telling me we didn't get it in Bongland until, like, 2000. Yeah, so the game originally came out in Japan March 21st, 1999. Um, in North America, July 26th, 1999. Australia didn't get it until March 23rd, 2000, nearly a year after its original Japanese release. And then here in uh, Europe slash the UK, we didn't get it until September the 15th, 2000. Because, you know, back in the day, they always used to release games about a year and a half after they came out everywhere else. Oh, bloody hell, bloody hell. Yeah, the Pokemon series kept that up for quite a while. I think X and Y was the first time we got a simultaneous Warguag release in 2013. I think you're right, yeah. That was quite a while, yeah. Like I mostly remember the lead up to Diamond and Pearl coming out as an example where it was really excruciating. I think that was 2006 to 2007. And that was where it had started turning towards like news trickling out online. And... Because there were magazine scans going up, but not official sources, that was where you'd see a lot of stuff sort of getting a bit confused, a bit Chinese whispery, but I'm glad we don't have to deal with that anymore, I can say that much. <laughs> hmm, yes. A little bit of a Lapras in the distance there. The more you take pictures of it, the closer it will get down the course, so we've got to keep an eye out for that. Lapras, for me, was one of the, uh, what I called as a kid, because I love to come up with names. One of the legendary three, the really tough ones to find. Mm -hmm. Because on the TV, I played this on at my grandma's house. You literally couldn't see Lapras. It blended in with the blue. Oh, bless. CRTs don't really give the best color distribution. And given I was playing even a lot of HD games on an old CRT for the longest time, I know exactly what you mean there. <laughs> ah, yes. Fantastic, darling. The camera loves you. Now, uh, we can't do everything on our first go through the beach here. We've got to, you know, take pictures of Pokemon, get points, unlock new stuff, and uh, eventually we'll come back and we'll just be pestering Pokemon, we'll be throwing apples, we'll be dashing through the stage. But uh, if you, like, want to redo stages but can't be asked with, like, you know, go through the whole thing slowly, I would recommend just, you know, Hitting pause and, you know, quick course, and you can do what you want there. Yeah, which is good, because it means that you haven't got a waste of time if you only need to, like, take a picture of one particular Pokemon. Unless that one particular Pokemon appears right at the end of the course, in which case, yeah, you got to sit there for a while. Yeah. I actually, uh, for my birthday a couple years ago, I decided to try and speedrun this game. It was the first game that I ever, like, really tried to speedrun there. And, uh, I actually managed to beat this whole game in one hour, which I thought was super good. And then I realized that the, the, the regular speedruns of this game are about 20 minutes, so... <laughs> I think the 100% speedrun's like 26 minutes or something, on it? Because, like... It it's a fun game for what it is, but like, it, even on a casual playthrough, this will probably only take you a few hours. It's not a long game by any means, but I 
can let that slide on account of it's an N64 game and you know they're using a lot of 3D models and whatnot for the first time there's only so much they can do without making it repetitive. Yeah, and the, as such, there's only 63 Pokemon or so in the game, I believe, compared to, like, 200 or so in New Snap, and, uh, by God, I can't wait to play that. I gotta order my copy at the weekend, and, uh, we should have the same team here covering that, so, uh, it's gonna be a good time. But now comes the fun part, where we grade pictures, we go through, and we check stuff out. So, uh, let's have a look here. It's a nice dynamic do-duo. About to get run over by a train by the looks of things there. <laughs> <laughs> Pikachu on the verge of dabbing, we must not let him trap his soul within the photo. I got a lot of Butterfree, but uh, I'm not sure if there was a, a close one or not. Well, it mainly prioritises it being in the middle of the frame, doesn't it? So that's really where, like, what distinguishes what Oak thinks is a good photo and what's not a good photo. <laughs> I mean, this is sort of something that has a common discussion topic when it comes to uh, Snap, is what it perceives to be a good photo and what is actually a good photo, because in order to get the best scores, you need to be um, have the Pokemon taking up a decent amount of the frame, but not the entire frame. It <laughs> needs to be perfectly in the middle of the frame, um, and you want to be, do to be doing some sort of pose. And um, meeting those specific characteristics um, don't always lead to the best type of photo, because um, in actual photography you use things like the rule of thirds, um, or if you're going to do a photo that's more kind of in the centre, you sort of want to look at symmetry mm -hmm. um, and all that jazz. There's a lot more theory behind it than point and click. I loved then it just said that it didn't recognise the Snorlax there, and it's like, it's pretty clear what the photo is. It's a Snorlax's nutsack. Like, just let it have the picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, not the best pick of Doduo. I could have gone with one later in the course, but not bad for a, a starter picture. Now, let's see how well Pikachu does here. Yes, this looks perfectly marketable. <laughs> yes, indeed. I gotta say, only so-so for the size, though. Like, if I could get any closer, I'd be up the fucker's nostrils. <laughs> well, that's what Oak wants. <laughs> that, that's the other slight awkwardness with this scoring system, is it's never quite clear what is good and what is not, because certain photos you take and you look at and you just go, well, that is clearly a decent size photo of the Pokemon. It's it's pretty taking up a decent amount of the frame because you don't want it to be too much, but you don't want it to be too little. Um, but then other times he'll do a photo and go, oh my god, this is the best photo ever. You're just like, it's literally the worst thing I've ever taken. Uh, yeah. For example, um, this Eevee photo. It is not a good photo of an Eevee. And yet, because of the pose, because it's delightfully leaping and chasing things, it scores phenomenally well. It's really disheartening in that it only lets you save one photo of each Pokemon and sometimes you get a situation where your old photo looks better but the newer one gives you a higher score and you've got to make that pick and like yeah I think there is like a total gallery score isn't there? can't remember exactly. There is, yeah. Yeah, so in that case it's like do you want to sacrifice this picture that you like just to get a higher number? And I do like a big number, but, you know, <laughs> you got to think about the aesthetics, too. <laughs> this Meowth is about to be mauled by these Pidgeys. Hmm, it's so-so. Okay, the Pokemon is right in the middle of the fight. Good. Wonderful. Meowth didn't die for a so-so picture. <laughs> ah, well, maybe next time. Is this Goss using Pidgey? <laughs> You know, Oak, there's a bunch of Pidgey that live, like, right outside your lab. Why are you excited by this? Ah, <laughs> uh, you know, he doesn't really get out much. <laughs> no, it's more Professor Birch who does the outside research, isn't it? Yes, yes, we know all about Birch. Oh, there's even other Pidgey attacking this Meowth. That's hype. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. That was about as well as I could have done in uh, the beach for the time being. I could have gotten more Lapras in the picture, but uh, I just decided to go with what works, really. A lot of the replay value of this game comes from revisiting the courses once you get more items that you can use, because then you can kind of bait the Pokemon into getting better poses. So that's where you get better point scores as well. 
Mm hmm. All right. Next level time. Yeah. Ah, tunnel, baby. Yes. What's a Pokemon game without a power plant? Oh, wait. Sword and Shield. <laughs> Also, X and Y, if memory serves. No, X and Y has a power plant. It has the area in the desert, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And I guess the Pokeball Factory's also got a similar sort of vibe to it as well. Hey! Look at this fucker. Pikachu gets a good handful of different special poses that he can have. There's that one. We saw the surfboard in the first level, which we weren't able to get just yet, but that's one of them. I don't know if it's every level that there's a special one, like every level Pikachu's in, but he's the one, given he's the mascot, he's the marketable one. They want all the kids to be passing around pictures of Pikachu, so he's the one who gets all the cool shots. Electabuzz just fucking died there. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to take pictures of Kakuna. There they are. Fuck. Kakuna are some of the most annoying fuckers to try and get a shot off in this game, because they disappear so quickly. Let's not ask why they're going in and out of the ceiling like some type of incorporeal being. I think it's meant to be they're, you know, uh, going into the darkness of the upper part, even though it just looks like they just no clip out of there. <laughs> <laughs> there should be a magic arp in these waters, but I don't have anything with which to uh, bait it out right now. Now, what could that mysterious ball of gas there be? I don't know, young flame. Maybe we'll have to wait until the picture is developed. Now, that dates the game, waiting for the picture to be developed. <laughs> oh, yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> hey. How many kids do you think are, like, you know, watching videos of Pokemon Snap to prepare for, you know, the new one, and they look at the roll of film in the corner and go, oh, wow, it's just like the icons at the side of the camera app on your phone, and you're just like, oh, oh, it hurts. No, it's like when you look through old computer supplies and you find the box of real-life save icons. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, what do you like? Yeah, good shot. Another forbidden one for me as a kid, I had no idea how to get Doug Trio. I didn't know you had to continually take photos of the Diglett until he spawns, and uh, that was another one that I, I didn't know that some are triggered by simply taking photos of other ones. This Magnemite will not allow us to take pictures. And also, I think that Electro is just going to quite happily just sit there in the corner because... Uh, there's not a lot we can do about him, is there? Not yet, nah. <laughs> also, that thing is like so far away, so... <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> Speedrun tactic, you know? One thing I will say uh, right now is that looking at this menu here, um, and I think some people will agree with me, there's some differences in the graphics from the version that I play, so I wonder if they had to do some uh, some reworking of the um, the camera check graphics there for when it had to do its uh, delayed European release. Hmm. Possibly. I'm not entirely sure which version they put into the Wii Virtual Console, whether it's the PAL one or the NTSC one. So I think all the Wii U ones, or at least most of the Wii U ones, are NTSC, but the Wii Virtual Console was just whatever the fuck ROM they had laying around. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, like, Nintendo, they're not really the best when it comes to preservation. Yeah, it's a bit far away, sadly. Um, just having a quick look, I can't see anything about sort of the... Um, picture book moment um, but definitely in the Wii uh, Virtual Console re-release um, they recolored Jinx from um, the original black that it was to purple because obviously that is what happened to uh, Jinx's design over the years mm -hmm. but what they also did um, also happened at the time is that to celebrate the re-release of Snap the Japanese Yahoo Kids Pokemon page streamed all of the episodes in which Todd Snap appeared um, in the anime. Nice. Because obviously Todd Snap is the uh, lead character of uh, Pokemon Snap, which is pretty damn cool. I've heard rumours he's uh, going to be in New Snap, and by rumours I mean there's a guy in the trailers for the new game that looks like an older version of him, and he's wearing a bracelet which is the same colour as the shirt he wore in this game, so put two and two together. God, this is going to be so fun when this comes up, because... 
There's a little bit of peel of the curtain back. We're recording this on Wednesday the 28th. The, the new game comes out on Friday the 30th, so all our speculation here, people in the comments will be able to laugh at how wrong we are about everything. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I'm putting all my uh, chips on uh, Todd Snap being in New Snap, so... Uh... Yeah, this is this is going to be a terrible picture, but hey, it got so-so. I don't know how, but I'm not going to say no-no. I mean, the thing is, is that if you can at least get a so-so, then you can get usually far enough to hopefully have it in the middle of the frame to get that two times multiplier. If it's, uh, this is no good, you're screwed. We'll aim high for that so-so. <laughs> yeah, it's very nice. How's the technique? It's fucking dead. Don't call the don't call the cops now. <laughs> oh, it's impeccable. I've never seen a deader Electabuzz. I don't think this one's gonna do very well considering how far away it was. In my defense, it's kinda hard to tell, you know, where it is in space when it's a ball of ether. Wait. Yeah, not in the middle of the frame. Alas. Right now, I'm going for uh, entries into whatever passes for a Pokedex here, more so than just getting, you know, a high score. An interesting thing about the Haunter is that actually um, there was a cut set of levels for this game mm. uh, that were going to be set in a haunted house. And in fact, we have at least the evidence of it existing in the form of the soundtrack, which the um, the composer put up uh, samples of it online and said, like, this was an unused. Um, there was two songs that are unused in the game for the haunted house. One was a the, the track level, but then the other was actually a cut boss. So we might have had a Gengar boss fight because, of course, Gen 1, there are only three ghost type Pokemon. So it's probably Gengar. Kind of interesting that they even conceived having a ghost level in the first place, but I suppose you could probably pad it out with like, if you start off the course outside the house and then you can have Pokemon lead up to it, but, but still, like, the Haunted House song is actually really cool by the way, you can find it easily online now, so look that up when you get the chance. Hello, I'll come in handy for taking Pokemon pictures. Would you like to be closer with Pokemon? Then use this apple-shaped Pokemon food. It's not an apple. It's not. If you call it an apple, Professor Oak will slap you. He will, and I don't want to be slapped. It's sort of like how they can't call Cheese Whiz cheese. It is a cheese-flavored product. It's the same thing. All right, so to unlock the next course, we actually have to do something physical within the tunnel stage itself. So uh, let's go back and uh, maybe we can get better pictures of a few Pokemon than I uh, screwed the pooch yes. with in that one. Thank you. 